damn it, man, it feels so good to be back home. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Avery here, and clearly we're not using the tripod, as you can tell, because camera's a little bit shaky. My tripod's been acting up on me a little bit. But everybody, I want to let you know that I am back in town, safe and sound, while we continue to play test Splite while I drink my Sprite. I'm just kidding. We're not actually really play test and Splite. I actually, like I said, I just got back home in town maybe 30 minutes ago from my doctor appointments for my cancer treatment, aka my VHL. Just easier to say cancer because nobody knows what VHL is. Um, but that stands for Von Hippolindau disease. Everything is benign. Everything is good. I had a clean bill of health in case you didn't see my community channel post earlier today. But with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, I've been thinking about what I want to talk about. And there's been a lot that has happened in the past five or six days or so. Because uh, Uki Hashi passing away, I will be having a biography video talking about his life uh, and creating Yu-Gi-Oh! That should be out within the next few days or so. I need to do some research in on that. Because uh, I want that to be like a long retrospective type of video, like in that same kind of uh, content form. Um, so I thought I would do a retrospective deck profile, um, or rather a retro deck profile, and we're going to be talking about Chaos Control slash Chaos Turbo, whatever it is that you want to call it, uh, now that I'm back in town, and um, thank you all so much for the support. All the days that I was gone, I gained subscribers, so I didn't post for a few days, and yet I gained subscribers. Y'all are killing it, so be sure to keep smashing that like button and that subscribe button so we can get 800 eventually a 1,000 subs, and with that out of the way, let's dive into today's deck profile. Now we are at the deck profile table. Ladies and gentlemen, like I just said, thank you so much for all the support. Let's just go ahead and dive on into this little retro deck profile. Like I said, this is Chaos Turbo. This is the deck that's pretty much taken the best deck of the format name in Goat Control, especially if you look at the more recent Goat Control tournaments. It's not really Goat Control. Like, it might top here and there, but really the main go-to deck that a lot of people are playing now is Chaos Turbo. Um, some are playing Panda Burn, some are playing Monarchs, um, but it looks to me from tournament results that the best deck is now moved from Goat Control to Chaos Turbo, which is interesting in of itself to see how that old 2005 format has evolved. So with all that out of the way, let's just dive on into it here. So um, the, here's the thing with Goat Control format. In case you're new to the format, number one, you have something called Priority, which basically gives monsters like BLS a type of quick effect. So if you want to banish a monster, you can go Summon BLS, Response to the Summon, uh, oh, you're going to play Bottomless? Okay, well, I'm going to call Priority to still banish a monster, even though you're popping my monster. A quick Effect isn't really the best way to explain it. I would recommend you do research into it on your own time, um, but that's essentially a rough way of explaining how Priority works. On top of that, too, cards like Spy are very good in this format. You have a lot of generically good cards. You know, you hear of things like GoodStuff.deck, where, you know, it's a bunch of good cards smashed in together, and that's what these early formats were like, because you had so many good power cards and good defensive cards like Spy to thin through your deck for another Spy, cards like Magician of Faith, Pot of Greed, things like that. So, Spy is just a really good chump blocker. We are also playing three copies of Magician of Faith, because why not? Um, you have so many power spells in this deck that playing three is pretty much a no-brainer. Like, yeah, if this gets Nobleman, that's going to suck. Um, but that only hits copies in your deck, and I've had games where I've opened up multiple copies of Magician of Faith, which, yeah, it's a little bit of a brick, but I mean, if you've got one power spell in your grave that you're just able to constantly recycle, it's like you're playing more copies of those spell cards, which definitely shows you how much you get as evolved from Flip Effect Monsters. For part of the Chaos Engine, we're playing two copies of Chaos Sorcerer. It's a really good card. Not much else to say about it. One copy of Tsukiyomi because it's it's a Book of Moon and it's really good. Resetting your Magician of Faiths are really good. One copy of Sangin. One copy of your Boss Monster of BLS because it was the best card in the game. Uh, one copy of Spirit Reaper because it's Spirit Reaper. One Sinister Serpent for the get back at the standby before they nuked it with its uh, errata. So it, it's a great card, especially when you combo it with... Uh, Graceful Charity, it's like you're only ditching one card instead of two. And this is the, I guess what you call like a Prismatic Secret Rare from the 2004 game. Three, two, one. And what's nice about this Secret Rare is that it's gone up to like six, seven bucks last time I checked and I got it at four for a near mint. So yeah, goes to show you that investing in old formats can pay off, even if it's just by a couple bucks. 
We're playing one copy of our super rare tribe infecting virus because tribe infecting virus is really good in this format. One copy of breaker because it's good. We're also playing three copies of Decoichi because it's a really good draw one. You can just set it, the opponent runs over it, you get a draw and a dark monster into the grave, or you can flip it to draw a card. More deck thinning is always good. And then we're playing three copies of Thunder Dragon because again, deck thinning is really good. Uh, typically the way that you use this, you can use it to go like ditch Thunder Dragon, get two more copies of Thunder Dragon, or just go Thunder Ditch at thunder ditch to add the third that's what i typically do is just ditch a thunder to add the second then ditch the second to get the third just because you want those light monsters in your graveyard and you want to deck thin as much as possible and get as many shuffles as possible and that's it for the monsters you do play a good chunk but i mean it's a chaos deck so that's not really a big deal uh we're also playing two copies of nolman to cross out because it's busted in this format uh, not much else to say there. One copy of Book of Moon because Book of Moon is just so good. We're playing two copies of Upstart Goblin because even back in this format, playing less cards in your deck is always good. Playing 38 cards instead of 40 is never a bad thing. And we saw this, you know, especially in Dragon Ruler format where when you played three Upstart, you were playing a 37 card deck. You don't care about giving your opponent a thousand life points because you're going to beat them anyway. One copy of Delinquent Duo because I like ripping cards out of your hand. One copy of Snatch Steel because it's good. One copy of Pot of Greed because it's broken and apparently really confusing. One copy of Graceful Charity because I like drawing cards. One MST because it's MST. One Heavy Storm uh, to round off the spells. But then also getting into more good stuff dot deck uh, is two copies of Raigeki. You would think that ditching a card is not something you really want to do in this format, but I mean, if you're ditching a Sensor Serpent, you're not really ditching a card. Um, if you're ditching a Thunder Dragon, you're not really ditching a card. Like, you don't really care about losing resources out of your hand when you can recur them with, like, Magician of Faith or even just help break up the opponent's board. Uh, one copy of Mirror Force, because it was at one, and it was good. One copy of Jar Greed, which means you're basically playing a 37-card main deck. One Torrential Tribute, one Ring of Destruction, and then the three Broken Solemn Judgment, which, from my understanding, this was not originally played back in Go Control. Like, a lot of people thought that the life point payment was too much. I remember even back in Teledad format, not a lot of decks played Solemn Judgment because they felt that the life point payment was just too much. But now when we look at later formats where you want to build a board and set up negates, Solemn Judgment is pretty much an omni negate. It means that the opponent's playing with a five card hand. You know, they try and heavy storm you, Solemn Judgment. They try and pot of greed, especially in like a very clutch situation when they need that draw too. Solemn Judgment. I mean, having an omni negate, especially in a slow format like 2005, can sometimes be the key thing that you need to win the game. Now, because this engine, or excuse me, because this deck isn't playing uh, any of the scapegoat or metamorphosis engine, you don't need a extra deck, aka fusion deck, as it was called back then. So, really, chaos is a fantastic budget option um, since. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could build Chaos. I mean, you could main deck Jinzos. You could side deck Jinzos. I've seen a lot of builds for Chaos side decking things like Royal Decree because Burn can be a tough matchup and you're not really playing a whole lot of traps. You know, you could take out the Jar of Greed, Ring of Destruction, uh, Mirror Force, Raigeki Breaks, things like that. If you're playing against Burn or something that, you know, deals with a lot of traps and throw in three Royal Decrees, you can take out one of your monsters for a Jinzo. Like, it's, this deck is very malleable. So, guys, I just wanted to start off with something a little simple now that I'm back from my doctor appointments and all that stupid cancer stuff that I had to deal with. Um, and I thought that I would show you all off uh, a Chaos deck profile now that I also had the 2002 uh, beat down retrospective video on the channel. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what other retro decks you want to see on the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.